Hey everybody, Mark here, and I'm going to do a comparison of the MakerBot Smart Extruder and the Maker, MakerBot Smart Extruder Plus. Um, in this video, I'm going to do an unboxing, show you what comes in the box, uh, as well as uh, I'm going to disassemble them and we can look at the parts comparing um, what are you paying for for getting actually the Smart Extruder Plus. Um, besides what MakerBot has said, it's a reliable uh, printhead. So let's open up the MakerBot Replicator Smart Extruder first. So uh, it, you just have to cut on the edge to open this box up. Uh, but opening it up, doo -doo -doo, um, the extruder comes in a plastic bag. Um, nothing really that fancy, but there's the extruder. And uh, some foam and a card how to use it. And that's it. So there is the extruder. So it's pretty simple packaging. Um, so there is the MakerBot Smart Extruder and let's open up the Smart Extruder Plus. The first thing that you notice is they got some great design cues from an Apple or a, a big uh, cell phone manufacturer. Um, the box looks beautiful. Uh, I mean it, it comes in a sleeve and then it comes in this nice matte box. And uh, if you can hear this, it has a magnet built into it. I mean, you know, you're paying the money for uh, uh, for the box, but opening it up, um, they did a much better job at packaging uh, and display for this extruder. It feels like you're getting uh, a piece of art. Uh, you have this little nice piece of foam um, on top, and then the extruder comes right um, in another piece of foam that looks like it has been uh, water jet out. I mean. Talking about nice packaging. I mean, let's just look at the packaging for a sec. I mean, it's just night and day compared to the old one. So I guess they're trying to make it um, a lot nicer. Um, you know, it feels like, uh, you know, it even comes with a little thing of, uh, of carbon, of, of activated carbon. So they definitely spent a lot more money um, on the packaging. Um, and it even comes with the even better instructions. Um, that comes in a little slot. So that, that's super nice. But, I mean, it's a box. Hopefully, I never put the extruder back into it. Um, but that is the packaging. Cool. Now, let's get down into the bones of it. Let's look at the extruders. So, first off, look at the front of the extruders. Um, they look pretty similar. Um, if you can tell that the uh, the air diverter at the bottom actually goes all the way around. Um, you might be able to see that. Uh, so that's the front. They've also added some uh, some brand marketing on the front, put a nice piece of, uh, of plastic with MakerBot on it. Um, the triggers look pretty, pretty identical. Um, they're not. This is obviously a little bit lighter. They're able to take some of the material out. Um, the bottoms uh, the blocks, or the blocks, I want to say, if you actually can see the, uh, let's sit, I don't know. Um, the blocks look identical on the inside, uh, but the, uh, this is the smart extruder, it has a piece of metal around it, and this one has a different uh, catch mechanism, so that's a little bit different, so they did do a little bit of homework and refine the design. Um, so there's the front. It let's count. I think they have the same amount of. I want to say that this piece is exactly the same too. But one, two, three, four, five, six fins, and one, two, three, four, five, six fins. So those are the same. Um, if you can tell, it's the the one. Uh, the uh, the plus. All the edges are a lot smoother. They got a great uh, probably industrial designer to come in and, and really smooth out and put some beautiful edges on it. Um, so there's the side view. It is a little bit thinner. You might be able to tell it is a little bit th thinner. Uh, going to the back, labels are in the same places. Um, the air ducts, because it goes in the same machine in the same place, the magnets are the same. Um, but some things that you can tell is that this, oh, those magnets. Um, these push in metal fasteners uh, to hold the, the, the wheels in the back. You can see how deep this one is compared to this one. So it is thinner. I mean, maybe it weighs less, um, but it still has four magnets. And, you know, again, just much prettier design they did over here. So uh, uh, 
more industrial design. Um, but that's the backside. Uh, some of the things you might be able to tell, they actually have, they have screws on this one now. So now you can unscrew it um, compared to these little compared to these little uh, tabs that you had to pull it pull it apart before. Um, I have not oh, I've not taken apart uh, the plush yet, but we will see in a sec how it turns out. Um, the other side, you know, basically just the same, nothing fancy. It looks like they did add um, some security tape here or something, so we're gonna have to pull that off as well. Um, and uh, the top side. Uh, they did still use the hot sticker, and, and they put it between both the pieces of the plastic, as you can tell, uh, to try to limit people from taking them apart. But obviously, we're going to take them apart and look inside. Um, but let us begin uh, by just taking apart the uh, the smart extruder. And the way that you take this apart is, is all you have to do is first come over here and take the sticker off or pull it back. I'll take it all the way off, but... Pull it back so you can take it apart. There we go. So pull that sticker back. Uh, and this piece comes off. So I just put that piece to the side. Um, and that's actually how the filaments guided in. It actually comes in the top. I don't know what the side is for. Maybe it was an idea. Um, but there is a channel for it to travel that way. I don't know if it was a failed idea or, or this was an afterthought. Um, but to take it apart, all you have to do is kind of get your screwdriver in behind it. And if it all works out well, you kind of can peel them apart. Oh. Actually, for some reason, my, uh, my piece of plastic here for the uh, air deflector actually broke into two pieces or came apart so that was making it a little bit harder to take apart but let's take off the front panel it should just come right off and ta-da there is the uh, the guts of the uh, smart extruder let's uh, now let's take apart the uh, the smart extruder plus again you just pop this bottom deflector off and what's nice about this one is they have some screws. Um, so I have not taken apart this extruder yet, so I don't know what I have ahead of me, but we will see. So just take these screws apart, take these screws off. And it's kind of hard with all this, all these magnets in the way. Metal objects like to snap to them. There we go. Let's get this security sticker off. I mean, heat sticker, I'm sorry. Not security sticker, but it's obviously put on there for security. You can just pull it off and put it to the side. And I saw the other sticker right here. Sneaky, sneaky. This looks like a security sticker, but... Oh, well. Already bought it. Yeah, you can tell. You can tell by pulling it back. It has some metal foil, so it's it shows if you've tampered with it. But, eh. Oh, well. And then... Take those... Take all these screws out of there. There's just... Just some... Looks like maybe some M2 screws. Let's see if we take this apart now. Oh, there's a little plastic cap that comes on the top too, so you can take that off. Kind of keeps it together. And here we go. Let's see what the difference is. Ta-da! Huh. They look very, very similar. Um, first thing that you notice uh, on them is I guess this idler wheel so we can maybe we can pop that out first but it has some really nice ball bearings those are some uh, I don't know something RB they have some nice ball bearings on either side so there's some ball bearings we'll maybe we can try to take these apart at the same time but looks like they got the same ball bearings so nothing new there let's get into this 
so how does this come out? This comes. Oh, oh. So let's maybe I can take this first. I'll take this one off. This seems a lot easier. So this is the uh, the spring assembly to go against uh, the gear. But there's a there's a nice spring there uh, to put tension on with this little ball bearing. And down here, if you can see that, there's a magnet. And this is used for when the uh, extruder head is moving up and down. It looks like there's a little sensor right on this, right on this board right here, uh, to uh, to show when the extruders touch the bed. So that's pretty cool. So that's that. Um, let's try to take this one apart now and see the difference. And without messing it up, I wonder if you can take it apart. There we go. Um, had to take this out first. There's the uh, uh, the drive the drive gear. Take that one out too. We'll take that one out. Um, but you can get a little bit closer. It looks like if you can look and compare, there. Oop, magnets. But there is a PTFE tube or some type of tube that runs all the way down uh, into the the extruder. Compared to this one, there is not one. And I don't know if you can tell, but this is this one is a little bit jammed. Um, but there is a, a new tube that runs down there, so that's a nice addition. But I'm trying to... How do you come out? There we go. So, let's compare these two pieces together. Those look identical. So those are the same, but you can see there's not that spring piece on it, but... We'll see why, because that piece has been redesigned. It looks like it is encapsulated onto the tube somehow. There's like a little, looks like there's like a little bit of pin right there. Um, but there is a tube that runs all the way up. And if you can tell, I don't know if you can see that, but in the tube, um, it is actually drilled out. So it's a bigger tube and it's drilled out to that two millimeters ID, um, but it tapers in. So that is, I guess, how they are going to fix a lot of these uh, jamming issues they're having. Um, so that is a big difference right there. So has this tube with the springs actually look the same. This piece, oh, well, let's see. This piece looks very, very similar, but it's a little bit different. It has the same magnet, um, but it's been redesigned. This uh, uh, The bed, the bed uh, height. But let's see if there's anything else different. Oh, oh, look at this. So they have a piece of machine metal here now. So at the bottom, they have a piece of machine metal. It looks like it's machined pretty quickly. Come on, magnets. Um, but you can see there's a piece of machine metal now, and that actually um, registers into the, uh, the housing uh, so it can float. Um, and let's see if we can see the... Can't really get... Let's see if we can take this out this cage off so this has a cage instead but this has a piece of machine metal so that's a little bit different um, but the heater blocks then get to the side the heater blocks look identical so the heater blocks are all the same um, so all they really did was replace this ugly piece of sheet metal with a nice thinner piece of metal um, so maybe there was maybe that helps out with uh, the the head floating a little bit better but let's see even about the boards so it looks like it looks like the boards are about the same let's see if we can come in a little bit closer guys here we go give me a sec Ugh. there we go oh come on now there we go so let's look at the boards themselves um put this back in place um, but the boards are slightly different it looks like they improved upon it looks like a, actually a much more organized board over here a lot smaller um, uh, resistors compared to these oh come on now compared to these bigger ones over here uh, again the come on the ball bearings are the same in the back for the idler so those are all the same um, these wheels look a little bit differently this is you know obviously over on the left hand side this is the old one this is the new one 
um, but it looks like these are slightly different wheels. The side profile looks about the same, but um, they are slightly different. Um, I'm not going to take this part apart, but if you might be able to see inside, uh, maybe. It looks like there's just a little uh, photo photo diode or something in the back of it that, that shows, come on. Um, oh, there goes a magnet. Ooh, really nice magnet. Come on now. There we go. Um, but it looks like uh, those those look the same. And uh, with a new one, another thing too is that they've thinned out some of this plastic. So this is actually thinner plastic now. So maybe this head, maybe this one is a little bit lighter. Um, but so the big difference I can tell is that there's this piece of uh, machined. The biggest difference is that you can tell between them is there's this piece of machine metal instead of this housing. Um, it has this PTFE tube now instead, like this one does not. Um, new circuit boards, that's not a big difference. Um, idler wheels, maybe it's improved a little bit, but I really can't tell. Um, and it has this, uh, now this uh, bed leveling is uh, better it stays on the PTFE tube so maybe that helps out with uh, locating where the head is um, and uh, only other I guess the top too um, a little bit difference up here is that the filament did come in uh, from the top with that other piece of plastic as we talked about this piece of plastic um, but it did have a separate tube to come around here then drive down it looks like we've never used this for some reason so they went away from that and now it just comes straight down uh, with the plus straight down um, into the drive mechanism so if you guys got any questions please send them to me um, I'm about to run uh, the new um, the new extruder in the next couple days and I'll tell you how they how the new one runs compared to the old ones um, I have went through now uh, five um, just normal extruders, uh, not not the plus uh, with them jamming and taking them apart. So let's hope that this new tube um, has fixed the problem and uh, made this machine a lot better. If you guys have any questions, please leave them up below and I'll try to respond. Uh, till then, happy printing.